Hi, this is David Monarch Turtle continuing the series of reviewing practice questions from the financial risk manager exam. This is part one, topic three, products and markets. And here a classic question about hedging with index futures, where I've borrowed from the 2012 sample, part one, question five, but I did modify a couple of these numbers to make it more realistic. For example, the S&P 500 index futures price is currently around 1300 rounded. But this is question otherwise mechanically is what you would see on the exam and you can see it's fairly difficult in my opinion. So what I'd like you to do is pause after I read it, see if you can work it out. It's the best way to try and learn this and then see how your solution compares to my explanation. Let's take a look. You own a portfolio with a value of US $50 million and you need to hedge it with S&P 500 index futures contracts. The correlation coefficient between the portfolio and index futures price is 0.65. The standard deviation of the portfolio is 7%. I'll just quickly note that that's going to be synonymous with the volatility. This could just as easily say the volatility of the portfolio is 7%. The standard deviation of the futures contract is 6%. And finally, the price of the S&P 500 index futures contract is currently $1,300. And then parens, we're given this last piece of information, but we might not be given this. It's reasonable to expect us to know this because this is a specification as part of the standardized contract that trades on the exchange. And that is that the size of one S&P 500 index futures contract is, by definition, by design, 250 as a multiplier on the price. You may recall that the mini is 50, but the full contract is 250 times the price. So then the question is, what is the hedge trade? Go ahead and hit pause. Please try and work it out before looking at my explanation. Okay, let's see how we did. We have a lot of assumptions here. And what does the question want? Well, what it really wants is for us to solve the optimal hedge ratio. And we can kill two birds with one stone here by understanding that that optimal hedge ratio is really equal to beta and which is the same as the slope of this regression line. So I'm covering up the question here a little bit just to show this graphic here. These, this is just stylized. I just plotted a few data points and then plotted a line. And the fact that we're given the correlation coefficient that's between the portfolio and the index futures is a hint that we're going to be relying on a linear relationship and seeking the optimal hedge ratio. So if we just imagine regressing the portfolio, that's our underlying position, which we can think of as the spot position against the hedge instrument, which is going to be the futures contract. So that's our classic regression here from John Hall. We're regressing the spot on a futures where the futures position is going to be the hedge. So after we hedge, our net position is going to be two, have two components, the underlying exposure and then the hedge instrument. So if we regress portfolio on futures price, we're going to end up with an ordinary least squared OLS regression line. The slope of that line is what we could refer to as beta of the portfolio with respect to the futures position. And so I said we could kill two birds with one stone and that's because over here on the right is the optimal hedge ratio that this question wants us to solve for. But I just like to remind that beta of the portfolio with respect to the futures is given by this. And hopefully you're familiar that beta is a covariance divided by variance. Beta is always a covariance divided by variance. In this case, covariance between portfolio and futures divided by variance of the futures. And in the numerator, if we break out that covariance, Hopefully you also know, because you need to know, that covariance is equal to the product of volatility, volatility, and correlation. That's rho, our correlation, right there. And the denominator, again, is variance of the futures. That means our beta here, we can simplify by canceling one standard deviation or volatility of the futures position. And you can see we're going to end up here with the formula for the optimal hedge ratio. That little asterisk means optimal. H denotes hedge ratio. There could be several hedge ratios. We want the optimal one. What does it mean by optimal? It means that the 
combined position of the underline plus the hedge, the combined position has, a, has the minimum possible variance. So our optimal hedge ratio is the same as beta, just simplified. We can, we can say this in English with, it's really correlation multiplied by cross volatility. See how straightforward this optimal hedge ratio is? Correlation between the two multiplied by cross volatility. And so you can see, once we've got that down, that this optimal hedge ratio is solving for the slope of this line or beta of the portfolio with respect to futures then we can go to um, solving for the optimal hedge ratio as a function of portfolio volatility, that's the numerator, futures volatility, that's the denominator, and the correlation or Greek row that we're given between the two right here. We need those three terms, and you can see in Excel, I've uh, just done that straightforward formula and produced 0.758 or 0.6, as H asterisk or the optimal hedge ratio given these assumptions, also known as the slope of this line. And so note we have a less than one for one correspondence, it's not a 45 degree angle. But that's really the key to solving the problem because once we're given the optimal hedge ratio, then we can plug that in to get the optimal number of contracts denoted by capital N, again the asterisk for optimal where we take that optimal hedge ratio, 0.758 that we're given, and multiply it by the ratio of the value of our portfolio. So in that case, our numerator here is the $50 million portfolio, divided by the value of a single futures contract, which is going to be the product of the price of that contract, 1300 multiplied by the contract, a single contract size, the multiple of those two. And so hopefully you can see there that I implement that formula here. We have uh, 50 million in the numerator divided by the product of 250 and 1300 gives us the ratio of the values. And then we just multiply that by the optimal hedge ratio. And it gives us 117 contracts. Now are we going long or short? Well, the question says we own the portfolio. That means we're long the underlying portfolio. So in order to hedge, we want to go short the uh, 117 approximately S&P 500 index futures contracts. That will give us, when we combine our underlying with the futures position, the net position with the minimum possible variance, by no means risk-free. If this last piece is a little confusing, we can yeah, move those around a little bit. It might be, this last part might be a little more intuitive. We simply multiply each side by the value of a single futures contract and we end up with this equality because we're really just, we really just want to make these equal. That is to say on the left hand side, a number of futures contracts equal to the value of our portfolio times the hedge ratio. So if you think about that regression line, if the hedge ratio were one to one, in other words, if the, these move perfectly in tandem, this would be a 45 degree line, and we would just want to short the number of contracts that set this value equal to the value of our portfolio. But we have an imperfect relationship here. So in this case, on the left hand side, we're getting the number of futures contracts, 117, when multiplied by each one, gives us here a notional value, if you like, of 38 million, is going to be equal to the uh, value, the $50 million portfolio multiplied by the hedge ratio. So put another way, if the, uh, you, the portfolio makes a move here up or down, it's not a one-to-one -one correspondence with the futures position, but it's a 0.78 relationship. So that's the idea behind getting the uh, number of contracts based on the optimal hedge ratio. This is David of the Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.